next continent as Africa, factors as demographic changes, technological advances, and international cooperation have led to the entrenchment of the need for a broad-based policy-making process in Africa. Welcome, beloved, to today's YouTube video. And today, we will be watching a video by Apostle Solomon where he will be talking about the need of evolution, the need of the evolution of educational policy in Africa. And in this meeting, where Apostle Solomon was invited to speak or lecture at Harvard, um, he made he drew our attention to very important parts of education in Africa in relation to religion, specifically Christianity. He made mention of quite a number of points, which I agree and I think is relevant as a people, as a community, as a nation, we should think about. And it would also help us with how we would influence our world as Christians as a whole and one of the things he spoke about that struck me the most was he spoke about how African leaders want to set up educational policies different from their colonial masters and in doing this sometimes what tends to happen is that they put aside the benefits of Western education because we just want to have an educational system whereby is completely what our culture stands for but then he spoke about us having the right balance and he also spoke about us not embracing the benefits or influence of western education in as much as we want to do away with the western education and stop western education from influencing our educational system hence our children with western values and cultures because we also need to preserve our culture as i said earlier we need to strike the balance and apostle Salman made mention of these points and several other points so i'll entreat you to watch the video to, to the end and do what also subscribe and like the video and comment so see you and be blessed fostering understanding, empathy, and respect for religious diversity among all and sundry. The influence of religion on African education continues to evolve as the continent faces new challenges and opportunities in the 21st century. With growing emphasis on the importance of inclusive education, cultural diversity, and global citizenship, there is a renewed focus on integrating religious studies into the curriculum in a way that promotes tolerance, again, respect, mutual understanding, first among students and then among people from diverse religious backgrounds. This historical perspective attempts to highlight the complex interplay between traditional African religion foreign religious influences, colonial legacies, and contemporary efforts to promote diversity and tolerance in education. By understanding this historical context, educators and policy makers can work towards creating a more inclusive, culturally sensitive, and holistic educational environment that reflects the diverse religious traditions and beliefs of the continent. The need and evolution of educational policy in Africa. In a growing and ever complex continent as Africa, factors as demographic changes, technological advances, and international cooperation have led to the entrenchment of the need for a broad-based policy-making process in Africa. Such that the dynamic multifaceted conditions and issues facing education could be addressed in a comprehensive and intelligent manner. In general, the growing concern for change and the pressures associated with that 
the forces of international cooperation and the exigency to come to terms with emerging challenges of the postmodern era, they have to a greater extent shaped the policy making space of most African governments, thereby making educational policies in Africa take the form and shape that reflects needs, challenges, and changes of the current society. Additionally, the emerging issues and challenges due to demographic factors as well as technological discoveries and advances have also influenced the policy change exercises. For instance, the ever-increasing population and the critical democratic dispensation have led to the emergence of the concepts of open policy initiatives, which take into account the views of parents, stakeholders, professionals, politicians, and even policy implementers. On the other hand, advances in technology have opened opportunities for policymakers and implementers to explore and adopt novel and better systems that might improve educational management operations across the continent. With the emergence of globalization and advances in technology, African governments are becoming more and more aware of the need to change, manage, and upgrade their educational systems. This is because the current call for international cooperation and the current education for international competition require that Africa have a form of education that is able to meet the challenges of globalization. The attempt to reform educational policy in a manner that reflects the changes and challenges of the postmodern era seem to have been influenced by a number of interrelated factors. Among the many factors, is the public's concern and demand for change. In many African countries, especially within the 1980s and 1990s, the public became concerned with the declining standards of education and the growing form of indiscipline, inefficiency, and lack of patriotism among the citizenry. As such, there has been a pressure on autocratic regimes to transform the existing closed educational policies into liberal and progressive policies that reflect the nationalistic, democratic, and developmental desires. Educational policies in post-colonial Africa have evolved from being generally nationalistic and elitist at independence with no express state philosophy to being a more comprehensive and professional one. African leaders mainly have their priorities uh, in establishing a new educational system that will be distinct from that which was set up by colonial governments. However, the process of policy change in most African countries has not been smooth. There have been much more complex, multidimensional, and flawed changes that transform, that transformations have led to various reform initiatives in the educational sector. Now, let me pause for a moment and just make a comment about all of this, that um, the policies that govern education in any territory depend on many factors, among them, the understanding of the leadership as far as the value of education, its all-inclusiveness, and the role that education plays in shaping not just the culture, but shaping the social economy of that territory. And for most part of Africa, while on one hand, they seem to frown at what they perceive to be the influence of the West in pushing in their values across the African continent, I think that um, they have not been fair enough to consider the advantages that have come by embracing Western education as to the context that they had before its arrival. So the passion to inculcate or to develop and promote indigenous African education 
is wonderful, positive, and I agree with it. However, I think that there is a balance, and I'll be speaking a, a bit more on that, um, so that we do not attempt to preserve indigenous um, education at the expense of the value that has come from Western education. There are many, many regions in Africa that blatantly frown at anything that reflects technological advancement and any improvement in knowledge that was beyond their original context. I think that is very dangerous, dangerous for the future of Africa. The influence of faith-based organizations on the educational landscape of Africa.